the change. It's a bit of a stretch for me. This is not Iowa. Nope. Or Illinois, either. Illinois. <laughs> We're uh, standing in an incredibly beautiful spot here with the Rocky Mountains in the background overlooking the Morkill River Valley and uh, some interesting terrain down there. Paul, can you tell us a little bit about soil processes in this landscape? Sure. Well, one of the things that we, we tend to focus on in soil science is soil profiles that have very nicely developed sequences of horizons that are really easy to see and, and quite distinct. But we tend to overlook the fact that in many very dynamic landscapes, such as this mountain landscape around us, that there are processes that occur which can often really complicate uh, the process of soil formation, which can interrupt soil formation, which can start it completely from scratch by either removing the uh, soil profile or much of the soil profile or depositing new materials. So I wanted you to see this really dynamic landscape to, to provide a particularly good example of the way in which soil formation can be interrupted by geomorphic processes. Now the, the particular story here in the Morkill River Valley, which is a tributary of the Fraser River upstream of Prince George, is that at the end of the last ice age, this valley was occupied for a while by a lake of glacial meltwater and it acted as a settling basin that accumulated probably quite quickly a very large thickness of lake sediments. And so these glacial lacustrine sediments uh, have been largely removed by erosion that happened very quickly after the lake drained in early post-glacial time. And so what we're left with here is a very striking landscape behind us which contains the remnants of these lake deposits. So those very conspicuous gullied bluffs behind us in the middle and on the far side of the valley, these represent the last remnants of those lake deposits. So any soil formation that is occurring on these remaining slopes is subject to any slope processes that may reactivate these steep slopes and cause mass wasting to occur. So even though we are in the interior cedar hemlock zone, a very moist climate with very high leaching, which tends to promote quite rapid development of soil profiles, so it accelerates processes such as weathering and, and uh, leaching, translocation of material through soils. We find many soil profiles which in fact are very weakly developed, and that's because they've been repeatedly disturbed by mass movements on these steep slopes. And the main process which seems to reactivate these slopes is uh, would occur after forest fires which remove the stabilizing effect of roots. So there's a period of time after fires when we can observe uh, accelerated mass wasting and we'll see examples of that in this valley. So uh, in this valley like in many mountain uh, areas of the world there's lots of human activity. Uh, can we uh, derive any lessons from the, the geological and soil history here that might um, uh, help us to understand the effects of our own actions. Sure. Well, I think th this is a particularly sensitive landscape, and so we can see examples of failures that have occurred in the absence of any disturbance by humans, and that should be a real red flag that, that uh, any land use changes that involve disturbing the soil surface, building roads, or whatever, uh, have to be done very carefully to avoid uh, triggering instability, because it's going to happen anyhow through natural processes. We just don't want to increase the, the, the frequency of it through inadvertent uh, actions of, mm -hmm. of human, human land use. So we're going to proceed from here to have a closer look at some of these soils. That's right. So we're going to look at the kinds of soils that would exist on more stable land surfaces in this valley and then contrast them with the, the uh, very weakly developed young soils which have been recently or repeatedly disturbed by uh, by uh, slope movements and which we think are usually related to fire. Looking at this slide, a bit of a scar on this terrace in the Moorkill Valley, uh, what's, what's that telling us? Well, our, this is a good example of uh, how dynamic uh, slope processes can be in mountain environments and in this valley in particular because of the uh, thick accumulation of uh, lake sediments which 
were down cut to leave these steep sided terraces, we find that this has uh, left a very important signature in, in the way soils have formed. So what we observe here is the result of destabilization of the slope that occurred after the escape of a prescribed fire in 1989. And about 10 years later, uh, we started to see this slope failure occurring. So what has happened is that the root network that was holding the surface soil together rotted away and we began to have a series of slides occurring. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in terms of soil forming process, this is an example of one of the types of natural disturbances that would result in resetting the clock. So soils formed on that slope would then have uh, either been redeposited, moved down to the base of the slope, uh, accumulated as a, as a, as a, a colluvial deposit of uh, soil and other sediments and woody debris, and then we'd be left with this exposed sea horizon type material and soil forming processes would then start going to work on them again. And is there evidence that this has happened uh, in the past? Yes, yeah, we see lots of examples, not only at that site, but all along the valley wall uh, in similar slope positions. So below that fresh scar, uh, we found in an excavation that, that there was evidence that the same kind of thing had happened three to 4,000 years ago. And we know that from dating the uh, charcoal using radiocarbon dating, dating the charcoal that was buried in the soils underneath older landslide deposits that probably came down in the same manner that we see today. So it's a very dynamic environment. And, and so we tend to focus a lot on how soils, mature soils look with very nice, clean, uh, cleanly expressed uh, soil horizons, but there's lots of things going on there in the landscape which can, can disrupt those and reset the clock. We think this is probably a good analog for the kinds of processes that, that uh, would have gone on in the past, and which I think are a good example of how uh, soil forming processes can be stopped in their tracks by some type of a natural disturbance that, that uh, resets the clock, uh, either removes the soil profile or buries it under fresh deposits and then soil forming processes start working all over again.